Let's pray. Our Father, we thank you very much for your goodness. Thank you because you brought us to this point now. When the walls of Jericho will fall down. I'm praying, O oh Lord, in every life there will be victory. You are going to bless your people. Where we have known defeat, we pray, O oh Lord, victory will come today in Jesus' name. All the hindrances to our progress, hindrances to our success, you are going to take everything away in Jesus' name. I pray that every brother here, every sister here, will receive a divine visitation in Jesus' name. Bless every one of us. In Jesus' name we pray. Today we're looking at Joshua chapter 6. And we have a title, The Message Divine Strategy for Conquering Impregnable Strongholds. Jericho, as we have learned, was a frontier city. An important and powerful fortress. Standing like a great hindrance to Israel's entrance into the promised land. Its capture was very necessary and indispensable before Israel could conquer the land of Canaan and possess their possession. This chapter we're dealing with, which is Joshua chapter 6, actually is talking about the capture of Jericho. And it provides much needed lessons for every one of us and principles for believers who need to conquer, who need to overcome, who need to overthrow impregnable strongholds that, is, that are hindering them from possessing their possession. In the overthrow of Jericho, we learn afresh that the ways of God are different from the ways of man. And that God accomplishes his great purposes in ways that may be despised by natural sense, knowledge, men and women. For the children of Israel to conquer Jericho. And for us to overcome, our great strongholds will require faith and obedience to divine directives with faith in God and with obedience to God's commandments, we know that victory is certain. And we will definitely have the victory in Jesus' name. You remember where we stopped last uh, week? In chapter 5 of Joshua, reading from verse 13, and it came to pass. When Joshua was by Jericho, that he lifted up his eyes, and looked, and behold, there stood a man over against him, with a sword drawn in his hand. And Joshua went unto him, and he said unto him, Are thou for us, or for our enemies, for our adversaries? And he said, Nay, but as a captain of the host of the Lord, am I now come? That is a Christophany, as we just heard now. And it was the appearance of Jesus Christ before his incarnation. He came as a captain of the Lord's host, and he was to lead Joshua into the battle. And the Joshua was to lead the children of Israel into the battle. That means then, the battle was passing away from their hand. It was passing to the very hand of the Lord. We have already learned about God that is a man of war. And he will fight your battles for you. In Exodus chapter 15 verse 3. Exodus chapter 15. Reading there in verse 3. The Lord is a man of war. The Lord is his name. And then says the Lord that came now to Joshua and he said, He was uh, not uh, for the adversaries and neither was he for Joshua as if he was going to be following after Joshua. He was going to lead the battle into the land of Canaan. And if the Lord Jesus is going before you, you are going to win the battle in Jesus' name. In uh, Psalm 24 verses 7 and 8, Lift up your heads, O ye gates, and be ye lift up, ye everlasting doors, that the King of glory shall come in. Who is this king of glory? The Lord, strong and mighty. The Lord, mighty in battle. That's what we're looking at today. And that gives you the background of the victory that the children of Israel had over Jericho. Actually, Jericho was such in a strategic position. If they had not conquered that Jericho, there was no way they could move in into the land. And we're looking at three points. Number one, divine promise and strategy for success. Number two, double principle of silence and submission. Number three, dynamic power that subdues all strongholds. How many strongholds? Everything will be subdued in Jesus' name. We come to number one, divine promise and strategy for success. Joshua chapter one, chapter six, verse one. Now Jericho was straightly shut up before the, because of the children of Israel, none went out 
and none came in. I'm sure you know already that the people in Jericho and the Canaanites, they had heard of the great exploit that Almighty God had made available to be done by the children of Israel. In fact, we have the testimony in chapter 2 of Joshua. Joshua chapter 2 from verse 9, And she said unto the men, I know that the Lord has given you the land, and that your terror is falling upon us, and that all the inhabitants of the land, they do faint because of you. Why? Because we have heard how the Lord dried up the water of the Red Sea for you when ye came out of Egypt, and what ye did unto the two kings of the Amorites that were on the other side, Jordan, Sihon, and Og, whom ye utterly destroyed. And as soon as we heard these things, our hearts did melt, neither was it there, neither did there remain any more courage in any man because of you. For the Lord your God, the Lord your God, he is God where? In heaven above and where again? In earth beneath. That's our God. And if you have a God like that, what are you afraid of? Everything will crumble and be demolished before him in Jesus' name. And then the spies returned. What was the testimony of the spies? In verse 24 of chapter 2. And they said unto Joshua, Truly, certainly, the Lord has delivered into our hands all the land. He, for even all the inhabitants of the country do faint because of us. And so they became afraid. And this was the result of their fear. They shut all their gates. They shut all their doors. Because of the children of Israel. Chapter 6 verse 1. Nobody went out and nobody came in. They thought they were fighting with flesh and blood. Little did they realize the king in Jericho. Little did they realize the men, the mighty men of valor in Jericho. That they were not only contending with Israel. They were contending with the Lord. Strong and mighty the Lord of battles. And uh, if they are contending with the almighty God. Who is going to win? Almighty God is going to win. Because all the shutting of the door. The bolts and the bars. And the iron gates or whatever. What are they before the almighty God? If you read Acts chapter 12 verse 10, he opened uh, those uh, iron doors without even touching. Because it opened by itself on its own accord automatically. That means then no stronghold, however seemingly secured or unassailable, can withstand or resist the power of the Almighty. Look at the promise of God in verse 2. And the Lord said unto Joshua, See, I have given into thine hand Jericho. And the king thereof, and the mighty men of valor, they had not even started fighting yet, and they had not even made any move yet, and yet because the captain of the Lord's souls had gone before him, the Lord assured him of the victory, that the victory was sure, that success was certain, even before the beginning of the battle. If you are still sick, I'm assuring you even before prayer, you are well already. If there are hindrances in your life, even before we mention the name of Jesus, see, the Lord has given you victory, has given you success already in Jesus' name. The children of God, the servants of the Lord, only need to listen to the Lord. And then he will give us that victory. We shall overcome all our enemies. They may be stronger than you are. Even it may be that they are armed to the teeth, seemingly unbeatable, but the Lord said, see. Look at it. I have given it to thine hand, Jericho, the king thereof, and all the, all the men mighty in valor. And then it says the walls of Jericho. Although they were still standing, you are to see by faith. You are to see as God sees. You are to count everything done, even before the victory is won. Have you not seen your the defeat and the downfall of your enemy now? Have you not seen that the, uh, every plant that the Heavenly Father has not planted? Have you not seen it is already uprooted from your life? In Jesus' name. All those strongholds, even before you see any outward, visible, complete, final manifestation of victory, already they are down. Because faith is the substance of things so far. The evidence of things not seen. Look at chapter 8 of this same uh, Joshua. Joshua chapter 8, reading there in verse 1. It's still talking about the victory of the children of God and the fear, the timidity in the hearts of the people of the world. And the Lord said unto Joshua, Fear not, neither be thou dismayed. Take all the men of war, the people of war, with thee, and arise and go up to air. See, I have given into thine hand the king of air and the people and the city and his land. Every time God was talking to Joshua, before they even got the victory, he said, See it by faith. If you see it, then you will achieve it. 
If you see it, then you will claim it. It is yours already. I've given everything into your hand. There's something surprising here. Now come back to chapter 6. Chapter 6 and in verse 3. Ye shall come past the city, all ye men of war, and go round about the city once. And thou shalt do this six days. There's something we need to point out here. Although the Lord had proclaimed a sure victory, yet he was not giving Joshua instruction for conquest. If the Lord had definitely assured him and he had given him the victory over Jericho, why were such elaborate preparations as these were reading from verse 3? Why were they necessary for the overthrow of Jericho? It gives us an important principle in the word of God. The disclosure, the revelation of God's glorious, gracious purpose and absolute certainty of its accomplishment will not release us from obedience to the commandments of the Lord or a commitment to a life of holiness and honesty. Put it this way. God's promises do not set aside the precepts of God. The promises on one hand, the precepts on the other hand, the promises tell us the victory is there. Success is certain. You are going to overcome. You have overcome already. Nothing will be able to defeat you. That's a promise. Look at the other side of the coin. You will see the precepts of the Lord. The commandments of the Lord. Therefore, let us understand the principles of scripture. It's like two sides of the coin. You cannot destroy one. You cannot step on one. You cannot overlook one. And then just claim the other. The promise on the one hand and the precepts on the other. The precepts now. He said they were to go around a Jericho once a day. And then they'll do that for six days. And then on the seventh day, they'll go seven times. After that, there'll be a shot. Look at it from verse 4. And the seven priests shall bear before the ark seven prophets, seven trumpets of ram's sons. And the seven days, and uh, the seventh day, ye shall compass the city seven times. And the priests uh, shall blow with the trumpet. And it shall come to pass that uh, when uh, they make a long blast with the ram's son. And uh, ye shall ye hear the sound of the trumpet. All the people shall shout uh, with a great shout. And the wall of Jericho shall fall down flat. And the people shall ascend up every man straight before him. It will be so before us tonight. It will be so before us tonight. Because we have a God that will never fail. And our weapons are not carnal weapons. We are told in Second Corinthians chapter 10. Second Corinthians chapter 10. Reading from verse 3. For though we walk in the flesh, we do not walk after the flesh. For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds, casting down imaginations and every high thing that exalteth itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity. I said bringing into captivity. What kind of thought? Every thought to the obedience of Christ. Everything in your life, every contrary spirit, anything that's a hindrance, will bow to the authority of Christ tonight in Jesus' name. Maybe your enemies think they are strong. Maybe your enemies think they are powerful. But look at Second Chronicles. Second Chronicles and see what uh, we're learning from here. Second Chronicles chapter 32. Second Chronicles chapter 32, reading from verse 7. Be strong and courageous. Be not afraid nor be dismayed for the king of Assyria and for all the multitude that is with him. For there, there be more with us than be with him. There are more with you. The heavenly host with you. The captain of the Lord host with you. Angels are camping around you. The power of the Lord surrounding you. The dynamite of the Holy Ghost on your side. There are more with you than with him. With him is the arm of flesh. But with us is the Lord our God to help us and to fight our battles. He will fight your battle tonight. I go to point number two. It's the double principle of silence and submission. The double principle of silence and submission. We're looking at it now from Joshua chapter 6. We're looking at it from verse 6. And Joshua the son of Nun called the priest and he said unto them, Take up the ark of the covenant and let seven priests bear seven trumpets of prime sons before the ark of the Lord. And he said unto the people, Pass on and come past the city. And let him that is armed pass on before the ark of the Lord. And it came to pass, when Joshua had spoken 
unto the people that the seven priests bearing the seven prophets, the seven trumpets of prime sons pass on before the Lord and blew with the trumpet and the ark of uh, the covenant of the Lord followed them and the ant men went before the priest that blew the with the trumpet and the rear word that is just coming behind uh, came after the ark and the priest going on and blowing with the trumpet and Joshua had commanded the people saying ye shall not shout nor make any noise with your voice neither uh, shall your mouth uh, neither shall neither shall any word proceed out of your mouth until the day i bid you shout then ye shall shout so the ark of the lord uh, compassed uh, the city going about it once and they came uh, into the camp and lodged uh, in the camp and joshua rose early in the morning and the priest took up the ark of the lord and the seven priests bearing seven uh, trumpets of prime son uh, before the ark of the lord went on continually and blew with the trumpet and with the armed men went uh, before them but the rear ward was coming behind uh, came after the ark of the lord and the priest going on and blowing with the trumpet and the second day they compassed the city once and they returned uh, into the camp and they did so six days and it came to pass on the seventh day that they rose early in the morning or uh, the, the dawning of the day and they compassed the city after the same manner seven times only on that day they compassed the city seven times wait a moment now if joshua had conferred with flesh and blood if joshua said men of war what do you think we should do here is a stronghold, and here it, it has walls a built a very high, and the men of valor are inside there. What are we going to do? They will never have counseled Joshua to do what he was doing now. Because you see, the ways of God are different from the ways of men. It is God himself that will give them the victory, and it is God himself that is going to give us the victory in Jesus' name. All those things that the Lord just told them to do was a test of their faith. Oh, there was nothing there. Just rise up uh, one day, the first day, and go around once. Come back, but make sure nobody is saying anything. Don't talk anything. Don't let any word come out of your mouth. Second, they do that again. Third, they do that again. If anybody was unbelieving, they might have said, We've done it first day, second day, third day. Nothing seemed to happen. What's the use of all this? And they went six times, and nothing happened. Then on the seventh day, the first time, second time, until the sixth time, nothing happened yet. You are following God by faith. If the Jericho walls in your life, if they're going to fall down, it is going to be by faith. And you are going to follow every instruction that the Lord is giving in Hebrews chapter 11. Hebrews chapter 11 verse 30. By faith. It's not just a walking around. By faith. It's not just a quietness. By faith. The walls of Jericho fell down after they compassed about seven days uh, but every step was a step of faith everything he told them to do they did by faith and god honored their faith as i've told you this plan or strategy was very simple in fact it was so simple that the worldly wise men among them would have despised the wisdom of god compassing the city once a day doing that for six days on the seventh day compassing it seven times and then there'll be absolute silence and quietness during each procession and marching around the city where they are being carried at the center the, the, the priests in front, those who are blowing the trumpets of Ram's son in front, and then the ark in the middle, and then the men of war following after them, and then on the seventh day doing it seven times. People that did not have faith in God, they wouldn't have seen anything in that. But you see, the secret of victory is that there will be implicit obedience unto the Lord. And then it will mean if you are going to overcome sin, if you are going to overcome sickness, if you are going to have victory over Satan and all his agents, and I'm sure you are going to have the victory. And if you are going to have victory over all the strongholds today, it's the same thing. The Lord is commanding us that we should follow his precept, follow his word, and then victory will come. And uh, you know that if you can believe the Lord, all things are possible to him that believeth. Now this uh, area of uh, silence we're talking about, that the Bible is emphasizing for them, why was it so for them? Uh, you must understand, murmuring and wrong use of the tongue was one of the great and frequent sins of the children of Israel in the wilderness. And now the Lord wanted to test them. If they had been cured from the malady, from the spiritual disease they had in the wilderness, the new generation must be willing to bridle their tongue. If they were going to possess the land. That's why it says they will keep quiet. A great test for them. 
And for us to you, it is still the greatest today. You say, are we supposed to keep quiet? And not speak a word at all in the time of our trouble, in the time when we see those Jericho walls, in the time when we're just marching around, in the time when we're praying to the Lord, in the time when we're saying we know the Lord is on our side. Oh yes, it's still the same principle. Number one on the one side, silence. On the other side, submission. What does that mean? Submission will mean implicit obedience. They submitted to what the Lord had said. It will mean unquestioning obedience to divine instruction. It will mean unwavering faith, yieldedness to the Lord. They revealed truth. They revealed mind of God. They revealed word of God. They obeyed it wholeheartedly. That's a submission. Hi, by the silence, it means all that time marching around Jericho. All that time, when you are looking up to the Lord, that He will give you the victory, and you are holding on to the promise of the Lord, there will be absolute silence. What does that mean for you, a New Testament believer? It means no grumbling. It means no complaining. It means no murmuring. It means no tail bearing. That's why many people, the Jericho ones, do not come down. They say, I've claimed the promise of God, and I've tried to step on everything, and I've tried to march around, and I even gave a shout of praise to the Lord. But the Jericho ones did not come down. Were you in absolute silence? No grumbling, no complaint, no murmuring, no tail bearing, no self defense, no evil speaking, no false accusation, no criticism of the brethren. That woman is my problem. That uh, man is my problem. No gossiping, no backbiting, no cursing, no abusing or insulting of our enemies and the people opposing us. No insult, no abuse. And there is no bragging, and there is no boasting, no argument, no debate with anyone, no contention, absolute silence, no careless talk, no harsh word, no angry outburst. You see, when you do that, you break the silence. No mocking of the foes. No mocking of the enemy. No proverbial song. Singing against your enemies. No reviling of the enemies. No foolish utterance. A peaceful kind of silence. Totally silent in the presence of the Lord. And if you will do that, in obedience to the word of the Lord, your victory has come. I said your victory has come. That's why the Bible is telling us in uh, Psalm 46, Psalm 46 verse 10. It says uh, in, verse four, in chapter, uh, Psalm 46 verse 10, Be still and know that I am the Lord. Be still, no murmuring. Be still, no complaining. Be still, no grumbling. Be still, no harsh, angry words. Be still and know that I am God. I will be exalted among the heathen. I will be exalted in the earth. In Isaiah chapter 30. Isaiah chapter 30. What did in there in verse 15? Here it says, For thus says the Lord God, the Holy One of Israel, in returning and rest shall ye be saved. In what's the next word? In what? I said in what? Quietness and confidence shall be your strength. We are to be very, very quiet. You will not argue with your enemy. You will not argue with the people that are insulting you, opposing you. Absolute silence. And then when you pass that test of faith, the Lord is saying there will be victory for you. I said there will be victory for you. That leads us to point number three. Dynamic power that subdues all strongholds. Dynamic power that subdues, overcomes all strongholds. In Joshua chapter 6. Reading there now from verse 16. It says, and it came to pass at the seventh time. When the priest blew with the trumpets, Joshua said unto the people, Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. Shout, for the Lord has given you the city. And then in verse 20, So the people shouted when the priest blew with the trumpets. And it came to pass when the people uh, heard the sound of the trumpet. And the people shouted with a great shout that the wall of Jericho fell down flat so that the people went up into the city every man straight before him and they took the city can you see their faith here can you see their obedience here can you see those two things faith and obedience made them to conquer jericho here is a remarkable example of united faith all of them kept quiet when they were to keep quiet united obedience all of them submitted when they were to submit but the time now had come to break that silence and to give one loud concerted shout. But what was the shout for? It was to be a shout of praise for victory over Jericho. But the walls were still standing, yes. Nothing seemed to have happened yet. That's true. And it appears nothing had changed. That is true. 
Why then was it a command? They should shout. It was a test of their faith again. It is easy for anyone. Anybody can shout after the walls have come down. Anybody can sing the praises of the Lord after the walls have come down. But when you are able to shout, the problem is still there. The barrenness is still there. The sickness is still there. The joblessness is still there. And the difficulties are still there. The mountain is still there. The stronghold is still there. And then the Lord says, I've given it to you. See as I see, and see as the Lord is seen. And he says, shout, a shout of praise. If you are able to shout at that time, then you have faith in God. And tonight, you will shout. Tonight, you will shout. You will not look at the mountain anymore. You will not look at the problem anymore. Because with our God, all things are possible in Jesus' name. Second Chronicles chapter 13. Second Chronicles chapter 13. From verse 13, but Jeroboam caused an ambushment to come about behind them so they were before judah and the ambushment was behind them and when judah looked back behold the battle was before and behind and they cried unto the lord and the priest sounded with the trumpet the battle was in front the battle was behind them held them in as if there was no way to escape and then it says in verse 15 the men of judah gave a shout and uh, and as the men of judah shouted it came to pass that God smote Jeroboam and all Israel before Abijah and Judah and the children of Israel fled before Judah and God delivered them into their hands. Your enemies will flee before you. Your strongholds will come down tonight. And remember when you are to keep quiet and remember when you are to shout. And as you go back home, you, 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 the battle is not with man. You are not fighting with flesh and blood. You are not murmuring against anybody. You are going about quietly and silently. But you are shouting the shout of victory and the shout of praise to the Lord. And I'm telling you, the walls have come down already. I said they have come down already. Why don't you rise up and give that shout of praise, that shout of adoration, that shout of worship, and praise the Lord that the problems are solved. Praise the Lord, the sickness is gone. Praise the Lord, the infirmity is gone. Praise the Lord, all those problems, they are out of the way. Praise the Lord, all your problems, they are out of the way. Every plan the Heavenly Father has not planted. Every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted, every plant the Heavenly Father has not planted will be uprooted away from your life. Uprooted away from your life. Uprooted away from your family. You know what it means to be quiet? You don't have any business with the enemy. Don't insult them. Don't abuse them. Don't murmur against anybody. Don't quarrel with anyone. Don't question anyone. Be silent before the Lord and let the Lord Almighty take over your battle. Let him take over. Let him take over. Let him take over. You have overcome already. You have overcome already. You have overcome already. You will not die, but you will live. You will not die, but you will live. Your problems are very simple for God. He will overthrow every stronghold in your life. He will. Victory is sure. All the strongholds are coming down tonight. All the Jericho walls are coming down tonight. All the mountains are going to be removed tonight. All hindrances will be removed tonight. Believe. Believe. If you only can believe, you'll see the glory of God. Those Jericho walls cannot remain in your family. They cannot remain in your life. In Jesus' name we pray. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. After tonight, you will not say anything negative about yourself. You will not say the enemy is more stronger than you are. You will not say the sickness will kill you. You will not say that your family is barren. You will not say there is no job. You will not say you are done for. You will not say anything negative. The Jericho walls will fall tonight in Jesus' name. And you will not discuss with the enemy. You will not insult them. You will not abuse them. You will not argue with anybody. When the Lord says, be still and see the salvation of the Lord, you'll keep your mouth shut. But when you come to the presence of the Lord, whether in the church or in your house, you'll be given the shout of praise. You'll be given the shout of adoration. You'll be given the shout of worship. 
because you are victorious already in jesus name if you have got the victory raise up your two hands you have claimed it you have got it you have accepted it almighty god we thank you tonight we bless your name because you have told us to see with the eyes of faith in our families there is victory in our places of work there is victory on our children there is victory in our husbands there is victory in our wives there is victory oh lord i pray all jericho walls will fall down before the people of god in jesus name all the strongholds of the enemy all the curses and all the yoke all the chains and all the shackles all the things the devil has been using to stop us from having the victory we are put it in jesus name oh lord i pray that any incurable disease i pray that any terminal disease i pray that any uh, any power of darkness any attack any yoke any curse i cancel everything in jesus name from the top of their head to the soles of their feet i pray you will make them healthy in jesus name that thing they call barrenness in the family of any child of god here that jericho wall you are going to fall tonight in jesus name oh lord i pray as we have said that you are going to put testimony in every mouth do it tonight in jesus name i pray that walls of fire will surround everyone here permanent proper perfect protection will surround everyone here as the mountains surround jerusalem angels of god will surround all the people of god in jesus name all the powers of witches and wizards of familiar spirits of abalists of sorcerers of familiar spirit or any other mommy water spirit you will fall you will come down from the lives of the people of god in jesus name lord we believe that the jericho walls in front of everybody sickness in the body of anyone affliction in the body of anyone impossibility in the life of anyone everything has come down today in jesus name confirm the miracle in their lives in jesus name thank you lord because we know you have answered in jesus mighty name we pray amen praise the lord shout and praise the lord shout and praise the lord amen